really, I don't think anybody should be discouraged by it. Because one of the things that I've learned through my life is that a lie is weathered by time. And all these people who are putting information out on the, on the web, advocating for the things, for things that are the way they are, really, their words are in the public record. So they won't stand the test of time. So don't be discouraged. This is what we need to happen. Alright, this image was gifted to me in 2009, and the moment I laid eyes onto it, it had a great impact on me. Uh, there's so much meaning contained in these spectrums of light. Among others which I brought today, this has been my desktop for years, and it's partial inspiration for what I have shared today. Every person that I've shown this to has had a different interpretation for it. Our minds have the ability to see a million different things in a single image, and that is our greatest talent. Welcome everyone to our future. The golden era of the 99% has arrived. Throughout our history, the power of decision has transferred from the kings and queens of old to the people of the world. Now, it is Return to those who think and act as kings and queens once did, in perpetuation of their own personal agendas with all the trimmings of a royal court. We decided a long time ago that kings and queens, the privileged few, could not make effective decisions for the collective. Why then have we returned to this way of thinking? Our brothers and sisters in history have fought and died for those rights and each successive generation has seen them slip away little by little. The time has come for each of us to think for ourselves, not subject to the whims of a ruling class or segregated by class itself. We oppose greed, not everything. Greed and selfishness is what our current philosophy breeds as an inherent and self-protecting part of our system. Its time has come to an end. I come here today as an individual, a single voice in this collective of the 99%, with the will to speak, one of many. Our purpose is to express our dissatisfaction with the direction in which we've been led. We wish to present the unwilling financial sector with an alternative option, the system of profit, which we have created and perpetuated for close to 100 years, leaves people behind. We have the capacity through science and technology to develop solutions to all the problems that plague us, to improve the human condition. However, it is our perspective which prevents us from doing so. The body is able, but the mind is unwilling. Our pursuit of profit is ultimately futile and truly leads us nowhere. Alternatively, the pursuit of human and technological progress is commendable. This revealed perspective will lead us to our next great phase of human existence. The industries and infrastructure which we've created are not at the core of our problems. The issue lies in why we've built them. We have a choice. Advance for the sake of everything or profit at the expense of everything. Which of those is a worthier goal? Money is a tool that we've come to misuse. It is no longer a tool of empowerment, but a tool for enslavement. Money is simply a means to an end, not the end itself. Our use of money is viewed primarily from one perspective. Fundamentally, our question is, how can I create profit? This is the, single, this is the singular value which our system is built upon. If we shift our perspective, we can alter this self-defeating course. Ask, how can I create progress? That question changes everything. And yet, all we are changing is the reason why we wish to exercise our will. For what we do as a species is almost as important as why. I ask, when did it come to be that knowledge and education became a profit engine? Crime and punishment, a profit engine. Sickness and health, a profit engine. Food, water, clothing, shelter, 
and happiness, all of these things also became profit engines. Everything we need to survive and flourish is being used to exploit us. This is blackmail, and that is illegal. When profit rules policy, even with regards to essential needs, we find at the very core of the philosophy a direct conflict of interest. We are not subject to the forces of nature in the same way as our ancestors once were. So why do we still structure our actions as if we were? I present to you the concept of fair witness, asking, what if we were to be observed from an outside perspective, one free of biased opinions? What would the observer see? From that outside perspective, who would you respect? The profit seeker or the progress seeker? This is not a revolution of old, waged with violence or destruction, but rather a revolution of consciousness. Battles will not be fought on the streets of the world, but in the minds of its people. Once the mind sees the world differently, everything else will fall into place. Our definition of the word value as a single identifier must be rewritten. Value has many forms other than just money. Most are incapable of being literally converted into a dollar value. Yet, they are ignored or discounted altogether as though they could be. A self-chosen stay-at-home mother raising her children, the next generation in the perpetuation of our species, is not factored into the GDP yet GDP rules policy. The entirety of humanist values must be accounted for and included in our systems. These values are much older than money, and we have disconnected ourselves from them on a fundamental level. Mother Nature is our teacher, and nature is a mixture of the very great and the very small. From atoms to the solar system, Every part of nature exists simultaneously and in balance. Our systems must reflect this as well. For man and woman do not invent anything. We only rediscover what nature has already invented. Science is a gift of nature, simply because it is a science, the study of nature itself. Our lives are neither in the black nor in the red as they are in business. If the people of the world remain silent and continue on this path, nature will no longer tolerate our actions. The forces that govern our planet will snuff us out, showing us how small we are in our current, evolu current state of evolutionary history. We have not yet reached the point in which we can create a planet. So what gives us the right to destroy ours indiscriminately for an imaginary thing called profit? stealing potential away from the future generations that have yet to exist. I have questioned since I was young, why are things the way they are? And asked, there is something very wrong. And said, there is something very wrong. We can do better. Things are the way they, the way things are is no longer good enough. We created the world around us and things are the way they are because of those who came before us. Those who come after us will look back, questioning us. How do we want to be remembered? I've come to realize that it's not a matter of us or them. We're all in this together as equals. My choice is to rise above what came before and create a world of inclusion. The people of the 1% will not be left behind as we were, but will be welcomed into a new world of possibilities that they did not have the vision to create but have every right to be a part of. Progress is possible. Things cannot change overnight. We live in a very large world, but we will move forward. One small step or giant leap at a time. Achievements such as space travel, it's not an easy task, but we do it. Drilling for oil, it's not easy, and we do it. Most of our struggles throughout history have not been easy. But the need and the will to find a solution 
has overcome the difficulty of the task at hand time and time again. This time is no different. Change will come. For if we do not, our history will end. As it has always been, nature prevails. So will we through her teachings. From history and nature, we are prepared for the next evolutionary step as a species, the evolution of thought. All people of this great earth, the door is open to us. We must walk through it together, leaving no one behind, and reach for our wildest dreams.